In this video, we're going to talk about wave equations and how to solve them. To motivate that, this slide has examples of different wave equations. The wave equation is used to describe sounds, light, quantum mechanical probability, and many other phenomena, so they're an important class of equations. You'll notice that all of the example wave equations I've included have the form uh, shown on the general line of this slide. They're comprised of a second derivative with respect to space on the left, a second derivative with respect to time on the right, and a proportionality constant. The proportionality constant is called 1 over v squared in the general case, and we'll talk more about v later, but note that it's equal to 1 over the square root of LC for a transmission line. We're going to solve the wave equations like any other differential equations by using guess and check. We're going to use a guess that wave equations are solved by a class of candidate functions f of x minus vt, where f is any function. We substitute this guess into our wave equation on the second line here, and then uh, evaluate it on the third line to show that indeed this wave equation is self-consistent. Uh, 1 over v squared cancels with v squared, um, and the derivatives are converted into total derivatives by the chain rule, so these are the same derivatives on both sides. That means f of x minus vt is a candidate solution. f of x plus vt would also work using the exact same reasoning shown here. Um, and because this is a linear equation, our general solution is going to be a scaled sum of all of the candidate solutions. Um, and just as an aside, there's an alternate form of this candidate solution, which we'll use later. Um, that's f of kx plus or minus omega t, where k is called the wave number and is defined as omega over v. Great, so we have a solution, um, but it doesn't feel awesome. We don't know exactly what the function f is, and we don't really know what f of x minus vt tells us about solutions to the wave equation. However, it does have one cool wave thing baked in to the candidate solution. Um, and that's all of these solutions are guaranteed to propagate with time. To see this, we can consider some function f at time 0. So this is f of x 0. Um, uh, in this top picture. One second later, this would have changed from f of x to f of x minus v, which means it would have shifted to the right by v meters. Because we've subtracted vt from the argument of the function. So the vt term causes solutions to propagate to the right at a speed of v. This is backwards for the f of x plus vt solution. Adding vt causes the initial function to propagate left. So because of this, the two candidate solutions are often called the left and right traveling waves. Even though this solution is propagating like a wave, we still don't know how to pick the function f. It turns out that f is set by boundary conditions on the wave equation. And one good example is a voltage source driving a transmission line. This schematic up at the top shows a voltage source driving a signal v in of t into a transmission line. We're letting the speed of the waves in the transmission line be 5 centimeters per nanosecond, which is 1 sixth the speed of light. Now because velocities are so fast in transmission lines, we often talk about them as fractions of the speed of light rather than big numbers. We do that using a variable called the velocity factor, vf, which is the ratio of the velocity in the line to the speed of light. Um, and before we dig into this slide too deeply, I have to clarify one bit of notation. The voltage source is driving v in of t into this line, but up until now we've talked about a solution f of t. On this slide instead we're going to replace the letter f in f of x minus vt with v, uh, and we'll describe a function v of x minus vt. Um, we're doing that because we're talking about voltages on a transmission line rather than arbitrary functions being solved in a math problem. 
So v of xt and f of xt are both solutions to wave equations, but we're using the symbol v here because we're talking about voltages. So at times zero and earlier, this is a pretty boring solution. We know that the voltage source has enforced v equals zero on the transmission line uh, for infinite time before uh, time zero. And so everywhere on the transmission line has to have zero volts because zeros have just been propagating down it forever. However, that's changed by time one nanosecond. The V in of T has started enforcing a voltage on the transmission line. And as those voltages are enforced, they start propagating to the right. This continues until the falling edge at T equals two nanoseconds, so here. And then the voltages on the transmission line will just keep propagating to the right forever, like in T equals three nanoseconds. So the shape of V of XT was determined by our boundary condition V in of t enforced on x equals zero. So this shape is like the f of xt in the general math problem. Um, and as a final note, this solution only has a right propagating wave um, because we don't have any boundary condition that creates a left propagating wave in this example. Um, we'll see boundary conditions that do create left propagating waves soon. Um, but it's worth noting that even though our general solution is the sum of a left propagating and right propagating wave, we won't see both candidate solutions in every wave equation that we solve. So in summary, this is the general wave equation. Wave equations are solved by f of x minus vt or f of x plus vt, a superposition of left and right traveling wave solutions. The waves propagate at a speed v and the function f in the solution is set by boundary conditions.